Today, let's put the Superbase text to SQL AI editor to the test by building a Swag Redemption mini site. So this is a mini site. I don't always want to bring all the t-shirts to meetups. So I just built this mini site where I have the email addresses um, of the attendees preset. And then I can put in my email here. I say, send me a coach. Uh, and then when I check my email inbox, I get an email here. Hey, thanks for attending the Superbase meetup. You can use this discount code to get one dark mode t-shirt. Lovely. So how can we do this? So I have my Superbase project here. Uh, I have a simple uh, database table called Super Swag Codes, and I have the email the swag code and then uh, the claimed boolean. So with the swag codes, I actually just have um, a CSV and I import them from a CSV. So I have all the, the swag codes um, and then also the email addresses. So that's kind of how I do this. I get all the attendee email addresses. I put all the swag codes just in like a Google Sheet file, download it as CSV and then import the data from the CSV here. And now the important thing is we want to have um, RLS enabled here because, you know, obviously we have an uh, email address. Now this is personal sensitive, sensitive data. So do make sure you have RLS enabled. And then we don't have any policies because we actually don't want to be able to, you know, uh, read this data or uh, manipulate this data from the client site. So we only want to do that securely kind of in the database on the back end. Now there is a fine little trick that we can do. And that is called remote procedure calls. So basically, let's have a quick look into our source code. The source code is linked here. Now one top tip on GitHub as well, if you replace the dot com with dot def, you get a VS code um, right in the browser. And here I have my app. It's a um, simple Dino fresh um, application. And I have my index file here. Uh, the index file is uh, basically just this um, header, the product details, um, the product details are just kind of the image, uh, if we're going back image, and then here this e email input form, uh, we can have a quick look. So this is the uh, email form. And the email form is just a form with um, a method post. So it's just doing a post um, submit when we hit the submit button. And so in our index, then we have um, this handler here. So in the case of a guest get request, we're simply just rendering um, our form. And then in the, ta in the case of a post kind of form submit, we can get the form data from the request. Uh, we can then get the email from the form data. And so now here, this is where the magic happens. So, you know, we don't, we haven't exposed our um, database table at all, but we're calling uh, an RPC. So a remote, remote procedure call, um, we're calling a database function that is called update claimed. And we're passing in this email input which is the email address. And then we're just getting data back. The data is um, either true or false. And we're basically just checking, okay, you know, if it was true, then say, um, thanks. And if it was false, then just say not found. Okay, great. And so let's go to our um, Superbase project. So now in the SQL editor, here we have ask Superbase AI to build a query. And what we can do is here in the settings, we can say include anonymous database metadata. Now this is important so that, um, you know, the AI has kind of knowledge about the schema of our super swag codes. Okay, and so basically now we're just going to say, um, create a SQL function that takes in an email address and updates the claimed column to true um, with security 
definer. Now, security definer is important. So um, if we execute the function, we want the security rule to be the one uh, who defined this function, rather than the one who's calling the function from the client side. So this is kind of where we get around the RLS issue. Um, so by setting security definer, um, our function can actually execute here as kind of um, an uh, sort of uh, service role user here, uh, Postgres user. And okay, let's give that a hit. And so we now say, okay, create um, or replace function, update claimed, we take in the email as text, it says returns void here. So we'll still need to update that. And then we say update public swag codes, set claimed to true, where um, email uh, equals the email and the yeah language security um, definer. Okay, this is great. Now, what we can say as well now, because currently this returns void, but we actually want to return a Boolean, um, you know, when this was successful. So we say update the function to return a Boolean if the um, update call was uh, successful. Okay, let's give that a save. And so we can now say uh, returns boolean, and then we can say return found. Um, and lastly, uh, we want to say, okay, you know, where email is email. Um, yeah, accept changes. This is great. Um, and now the last thing However, we want um, where email is email. And then also we want um, and uh, well, actually, you know, let's assume we don't we don't know. Let's let's uh, okay, update function um, to only update uh, a row if claimed is not true, you know, because obviously we don't want to allow them to do double claimed. So we can say yes, where email um, is email and claimed is not true. Yep, I think that's pretty much it. Um, there we are. And then lastly, one thing unfortunately, the, the AI didn't catch here is that email is um, ambiguous here. So we'll say email input. Um, and then we say where email equals email input. And now um, we already have this um, update claimed. So we say update claimed AI, let's call it that so we can um, we can test that out. And now we'll just say um, run. Okay, there is an issue, let's say debug. Um, were there any changes? I don't see any changes. <laughs> Except changes, let's see, run. Ah, okay, now I don't really know what the changes were. Uh, create or replace function update claimed AI email input text returns boolean begin uh, security definer yes um, yeah and there we have it this is this is pretty cool now we can go back into our project so basically you know this is what we're doing here just checking if that is all good so basically now if I try to um, claim again uh, you say, sorry, I either already claimed or your email isn't registered. Yep, this is great. That's exactly what we want. Um, and then actually what we're doing here is as well, we have a Supervase function um, to send the email code. Um, and so this is working off of uh, a database webhook. So you can see here, 
if we're going to um, database, webhooks, we have um, this email here, send swag codes, um, and we're triggering this on uh, update events. So anytime there's an update event, we then trigger um, this function. And so we can see when the function is um, triggered, then we have um, this uh, record and we're basically um, checking if, um, so this is the case if payload record claimed. So if claimed is not true, uh, then we're actually not executing this. So only if um, claimed is set to true, uh, then we actually want to send the email um, with the claim details. And now we also have an, um, a video, I'll link it at the top and the bottom, um, about sending emails via edge functions uh, using the recent API. Uh, so you can dig into that, but that's basically just what we're doing here. Um, we're sending from our custom domain, saying Superbase Swag incoming. And then if we're checking our email here, we got this. Uh, yeah, obviously do follow me on Twitter if you wish to do so. All right, thanks for tuning in and see you next time.